you just have to look at a person and you know by their eyes they are going through hell. My name is Anne Dowley Spillan. I'm founder of the Girls Club in Cork. It's a voluntary cancer support centre. I was diagnosed with inoperable cervical cancer. The hardest obstacle was the hurt I saw in my family's face. Because when you get cancer, everybody gets cancer. If my doctor had said to me, oh Anne, you're going to be cured, and that I would be climbing Kilimanjaro in the morning, I would have said, this guy's a crazy person, you know? And I'm here, because my mantra every day is, I got cancer, but cancer never got me. Mount Kilimanjaro is the highest freestanding mountain in the world. It stands at a towering height of 5,895 metres. The allure of the mountain has brought people from all around the world to stand on its summit. It's a mountain where ordinary people can achieve extraordinary things. For most people, Kilimanjaro is their Mount Everest. The reason for climbing it is personal. The dream that brought the girls club from Cork to Africa was a fabric of hope and love. A magic bond that united strangers with a common goal to support and remember loved ones past and present in their battle against cancer. Cancer awareness and cancer support is very important to me because I lost my own mum to cancer. I'm doing it for those who have battled cancer and for the girls club to try and make sure that they can continue on helping people through this. It's just been a dream of mine for 20 odd years and to do it now for the girls club and for people with cancer and give them hope. I'm doing the track in memory of a friend of mine. Two years ago, this October coming, my fiancé, he died and unfortunately Michael had taken his own life. But ever since then, Anne has always been on to me, never realised she was a neighbour. Um, always ringing, texting, calling in to see if I okay. And the following January, my mum was diagnosed with breast cancer, so she was always there to help support and be there as a friend and everything. I can't ask people to do things I don't do. No matter how you are, there is another person out there worse. My only motivation going up that mountain really is cancer and for all the girls we've lost. My mum, she protected us as much as she could and that's the type of woman she was. As much as I'm so nervous and so afraid, I know this is all for a good cause. Yeah. If you know someone connected or, or you've been touched by cancer or, or any kind of loss or any kind of upset, you can turn you know, your grief or your loss into something very positive, into something momentous. My connection with the Girls Club is that my sister's best friend uh, used to go there. Uh, she sadly passed away but Anne was fabulous to her the whole way through. I think she inspires people because she just proves that you can still live your life having cancer and it just I think it just gives people hope. I was very angry because the tumour took out my nerves in my leg and my back and I was angry at my body really for letting me down. It's getting over that then, the anger you know, the anger, and, and, and it is some anger. Well, here we are. We're now about 15 minutes off Shira campsite. It's been a hard two days for the girls. We have actually come from Mashami at 1,900 metres, up to 3,000 metres last night. At the moment, we're going a bit slow. We're about an hour behind our average timing. But the main thing is everyone is doing well. 
We're at 3,900 metres now. The porters are amazing and the guides. We come back every day from our climb and they have like a big sing song and bring us up dancing. And then in the mornings they come in with cups of tea or coffee on little trays for us. And um, they just treat us like queens. They're brilliant. We couldn't ask for a better team. We were blessed. I think the amount of played with my head yesterday a lot. Uh, I got to camp last night and I just had a meltdown. I got very angry with myself um, because I didn't think I was good enough. Yeah, I did want to pull out and I had a chat with Pat and the guys and the girls and Mike. And then a lot of honesty came out, you know, and why they were here and, you know, um, and my main mission to be here is, is to do this for me, but to show other people that you can do it, you know. That cancer doesn't take everything from you. I'm going to keep going. I had a bit of fight with cancer. This is only a little boulder. Today's journey is through what we call the lunar landscape. That's like a moon-like landscape right on this mountain where we have five different traumatical climatical changes. What we're going to see here is there's going to be very little plantation. There's going to be massive rocks, right, okay, which is like on the moon. And we're going to then come into a place which is called lava towers. Remember this was a volcano at one stage. So it's volcanic rock that we're actually traversing across. <laughs> Oh my God, up here I don't know, but I did. Thank you. I think the team are doing great. I think that their biggest fear, their biggest yeah. problem is that they're actually doubting themselves. If we can get them to stop doubting themselves, then we have a full summit core to the summit. It literally pulled me up to here. So there is hope. Are we going to reach the summit, sister? We are going to reach the sun. Yes, we are. We are. We are. We together. I think what happened, we were coming along and I was really sick and I saw a butterfly and I said, that's my girl telling me to keep going. When we have our chats, you know, when somebody is ready to cross over, we'd always say we'd live for each other. Today, we're here at the Barranco camp. The scenery around us is absolutely phenomenal. Today is a great challenge. We're gonna go up over 250 meters of the Barranco wall. It's a great uh, barrier that has been created by the lava over the years, which is actually keeping us away from our main camp at the Corango. The big problem that we're gonna face really is if we get a cold night. If we have to extend our stay on the mountain more than two or three hours, extra over and above what we should have, then lots of people here will get very cranky, will get very cold, and it will zap the energy, you know, phenomenally. I was really, really nervous about doing the Branco wall today. I didn't really sleep last night. Um, but once I got on it, it actually wasn't so bad. And uh, I took one step at a time. And I just feel now that I've done this, I can keep going. And someone is looking good. I think I can do it. I'm going to do it. Branco wall tested my fears of heights and scrambling. But I'm doing it and I'm proud of myself. I describe the Branca Wall as the Devil's Ladder times 150. But you know what? We're halfway there now. I feel like a mountain now, you know. We can all do it. What's the saying, then? I can do this. It's Featherland. It's Featherland. I started at the Bronco Wall, was very afraid. And I got a lovely message from Julie Kelleher saying to me, Anne, climb it for those who can't. I just got my head together and got here up, up here. I was the first to get on the Bronco Wall, I'm so happy. So thank you.
Tonight is going to be the big night. We're going to have to get them up at 10 p.m. I reckon tonight uh, is going to take them between, you know, between eight and ten hours uh, at the rate that they're going at the moment. Uh, everybody is apprehensive. They have anxiety. They're in fear of what the night has in store for them. So for the next 48 hours. Uh, the whole team are going to actually be just going in a zombie-like state to the summit. But once they get there, the elation will be amazing. Uh, I do believe everybody can actually achieve it at this point in time. It's going to be slow, but if working as a team, you know, each person pushing each other, uh, we will achieve the summit. Um, hopefully by 8 a.m. in the morning. All the porters and the guides and everything, they're all willing them up there. They're a really gregarious group and uh, that's it, to the summit. My one concern really will be Anne. You know, she's giving it her best, as she says, like she's sucking up to it. And at the same time, like, you know, she's very, very tired. She's suffering from uh, tummy bug at the moment and with the onset of that and the altitude we're at, you know, it can weaken a person a lot. She's uh, completely determined to get up out of the high camp and take a bash off the summit. She feels like this is a very personal journey for her. We'd probably do our best to facilitate her in every way that she can. But at the same time, we're also conscious of the fact if she tries to push herself too much, I'll have no other alternative to, but to tell her to go down. I'm doing it for the girls club, but most of all I'm doing it for me to kick the living shite out of cancer. That's the only way I can put it. See like how the whole team are performing up to now, whether it's dancing, singing, humor, they still got it. Like, you know, it's it's amazing. Like we we've been told like we're the most colourful team on the mountain. And that's always the way with Irish teams, like we're the best crack on the mountain. We have sing sing-alongs, we sing, we dance, we banter, we talk, and uh, I, I, I just think like we have a great bunch here and uh, they're all very, very positive and I have no doubt, you know, and I, I always hate saying this is a leader, I have no doubt that the majority of people, if not all of them, will in actual fact reach the summit. Mike, how are you getting on with a couple load of girls? Good. Think it'd be worse? Actually. <laughs> <laughs> we're at base camp now and we're about to go for dinner and after that then we rest and um, then we get up and attempt the summit. The last few days has been really tough and I've come this far so I'm going to give it a good all lash and um, to be honest looking at Anne she's very ill at the moment and I think she's a huge inspiration to all of us. have something um, at some of the events that I was having fundraiser events um, I gave ribbons to people who could write um, the names of their loved ones who they lost to cancer so I'm going to bring these I've, they've been in my um, backpack as I've been up through this journey so I'm going to bring these to the top of Killy and leave them there for everyone so here's to the summit this is my motivation for getting to the top it's my friend Charlie that died of cancer and this is a good friend's mine sister that was murdered a couple of months ago in Cove. So I'm going to place them so they're looking over us from the top of the world. A friend of mine, he um, made this up for me. It's also on Michael's headstone. And he said I could, he gave me a copy that I can leave above as well. So it's just something small to leave up there of him. You know, for myself, like I've been up there 36 times. You know, I love coming back because of the fact of the people. And in particular, like, when there's a goal at the end of it or there's an objective like there is in this one, you know, it, it really, you know, 
becomes ingrained into you, right, okay, to help others achieve what is without shadow of a doubt, their Everest. Everybody, you know, that is going to the summit have to really dig deep tonight. They have to actually be really, really positive. It's, it's, it's as we say in Ireland, like it's the it's Aetheling attitude. We can achieve it. <laughs> Freezing. Are you going to get up there? Yeah, if I crawl. <laughs> Is it all up like this? Up, 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 and it's worse. It's worse. No, you're not. Anne made the difficult decision to turn back from her attempt, just 150 metres below the summit. This was a heartbreaking decision for her to have to make. Less than a month after getting the all clear to make this trip, Anne's success was not the summit. Her success was beating the odds by getting this far, and that's a lasting legacy for those who will follow. That hope is worth fighting for. As the fingers of dawn break across Africa, the team push on without her. This is going to be their biggest descent. It's going to go be over 1,200 meters. This is their Everest. Like it's, like it's iconic in what it stands for in being down here in Africa, the highest freestanding mountain in the world. Like the adrenaline that the, that the team will get if they reach the summit will be unbelievable. Basically, everybody can just go after whatever they want, really. That's what it's all about. No matter what you do and whether you succeed or not in your own head, the fact that you went for it is success, I think. When I reach the summit, the most overpowering thing would be the fact that it's in remembrance of my mum and all those lost to cancer and those who are suffering on a daily basis. When times get tough on the mountain, I'll think of my friend and what he endured while he had cancer, all the other people that are suffering at the moment, all the people, young people that have died recently that I know through fam my family. Um, that'll spur me on. That'll, I have that grit in my stomach to do it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Here we are in some of the Kilimanjaro, it's been uh, no, 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 very no, harsh no, no, no. I can't believe that this is, I really can't. The hardest thing I've ever had to do. But I did it. I got this. Um, probably one of the toughest things I've ever had to do in my life. Um, that was for you, Karen Mubar. You couldn't do it yourself, so I did it in your shoes. You cannot give up hope. Hope is what we have. Yes, there is a miracle when the last breath is about to be taken. We still wait for that miracle, so don't ever give up.